Today, we're in our, on the Saturday within the octave of our Lord's Sacred Heart, we remember the most pure heart of Mary. This devotion to the pure heart, to Our Lady's Immaculate Heart, it was started to be very popular in France in the 1600s, and mainly thanks to Father uh, St. John Eudes. The reason why this holy priest wanted to uh, spread this devotion was because France was started, uh, starting to become very cold place. People were starting to forget the great love and charity of Jesus and Mary. Those were the times uh, when Protestantism and Jansenism did lots and great harm to Catholic devotion and also to devotion to Our Lady. So St. John Hughes wanted to make the faithful see that how Our Lady loves them and if they love her back, she grants them so many graces to serve her dear son Jesus her well. Like the Sacred Heart, the most pure heart of her Mary, it is both a joyful and also a sorrowful heart. In that same heart of Our Lady, her we find her virtues, her love for God, and her love for her Divine Son, but also the great love she has for whole mankind, because by becoming Mother of God, Mother of our Lord, she became our Mother as well. After our Lord's holy birth, uh, and she and Saint Joseph uh, took uh, the Holy Child to the temple so that he could be presented uh, there. And there in uh, the temple, there was holy man Simeon who uh, sang praises for this uh, child, but also made a prophecy to Mary that through her own soul, a sword shall pierce her heart, even though it's so pure, so beautiful, so immaculate, that heart, like the sacred heart, must bear all the miseries, all the sins, and all the bad deeds of mankind. We heard yesterday that it was a great cross, it was a great pain and suffering to our Lord's heart to carry all these bad deeds and sins of mankind. But equally, it was a heavy cross to Our Lady as well to present all these things to God Almighty for the sake of love to mankind. And this pain of crucifixion, it was suffered by Mary too at the foot of the cross. And there, at the foot of the cross, there, were, there was love of uh, three hearts, that there was love of God and love of man in the heart of Jesus, and also the love of Mary, his and our mother. So whenever we think about the passion and endurance of Jesus Christ, we at the same time venerate the pure heart of his holy uh, mother. And when Mary was living here on uh, this uh, earth, because she loved us so much, her humility always made her wish to appear like one of us. In the eyes of the world, Mary was an ordinary woman. She did her chores, she did her duties, just like any wife, any uh, mother who has a loving and pure heart would do her chores and her own her duties. And Mary's heart 
which was free from her sin right from the first beatings was so pleasing to God Almighty. We never do wrong if we love Mary and have devotion to her immaculate heart. So you should think about that you too were presented to God in your baptism like Jesus was presented in the temple. You also belong to God and like Mary, you are called to love him and serve him. So today, say to yourself, I will keep God's commandments all the days of my life. Simeon, he thanked God with a full heart for having sent the Savior. In what way do you thank him for the unspeakable grace of redemption? You should thank him every day in your prayers. Thank him of your life and the great gift of redeeming Catholic faith. Join your hearts to those of Jesus and Mary. In the Mass of the Pure Heart of Mary, this lovely uh, quote from the Canticle of Canticles is sung. It says, Many waters cannot quench charity, neither can the floods drown it. If a man should li give all the substance of his house for love, he shall despise it as nothing. Put me as a seal upon thy heart. If you love Mary, you also love Jesus. And to that good mother, you can always count and you can always go to her. her. May God bless you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost. Amen.